right, welcome back to another uh, another video for my Richter's Reviews channel. Now, this is not going to be um, like the normal review. Um, it is going to be somewhat at a, a little bit, I guess it would be. Basically, yesterday was Friday the 13th. Um, and if you're seeing this video, it would actually be two days ago. Because uh, this video will be uploaded tomorrow so which actually today when you see this video you're watching this which will be Sunday we got to get up, get that out of the way um, now most people put their list they have like there's 12 films in the series if you count Freddy vs. Jason in the remake um, and most people put it like from their their best to the worst or their worst to the best or least to favorite or favorite to least you know, that's all fine and dandy. I could do that, but see, see, since my Friday the 13th series is pretty much my favorite franchise of all time. I mean, I do like the Halloween and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Nightmare on the Street and Hellraiser and Candyman and Puppet Master and Child's Play and I could go on and on. But Friday the 13th is my favorite series. So, you know, I, every one of them has a different thing that is good and and bad and, and different and certain things that you like and you dislike but for 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 me um i i don't rake any of the friday 13s 1 through 12 i do not um rate them any less than two stars um now there is probably a lot of people who who if you do watch this video probably won't agree with the ratings i give these movies but like i said you know this is my opinion. This is what I like. Um, everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own likes, and uh, you know, every, it's, that's the good thing about horror films or movies in general that we can agree but disagree. So, um, without further ado, um, Friday the Thirteenth, um, I will give four, uh, four and a half stars. It was uh, I've already done a review on that video, uh, that movie. Prior, I did a three-part video uh, last year sometime, and so I'm not going to go into detail about that. But uh, Friday the 13th, the first one, I give four and a half stars out of five. Um, the reason why I don't give it a five stars um, is because uh, there is one little thing that that could have made it better in that, and the only thing that this is not uh, this is just. Like I said, I told you before, I like all the Friday the 13th, but the only reason I didn't give it a 5 star is because it's not my favorite of the series. Now, I gave it a 4.5 because it is probably the second or third favorite of my mine of the entire series. Um, I like the mysterious aspect of it, um, how you don't really know who the killer is, and you find out later it's Mrs. Voorhees. So yeah, that's what I like. Now I have, like I said before, I've already done a three-part video of the review of Friday Thirteenth. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. Um, so on to second, the Friday Thirteenth Part Two. Friday Thirteenth Part Two, the second film. Um, it it's not my favorite. I know there's a lot of people that do favor that film a lot. Um, I would give it uh, two and a half. Now, the only reason I give it two and a half, um, and I've already talked about this in my other, um, I might, I actually might bump it up to a three. I'll give it three stars. Um, a lot of people like the potato sack, pillowcase, uh, overalls, and all that stuff of, of Jason. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. That's not the reason why I don't like it. Um, it's just the main the biggest reason is there's never an an ending to my satisfaction it's like you don't know what happened to paul you don't know whether she was she ex she was dreaming or what ha why the anyway that's not the main reason why i didn't dislike part two it's because it's it's if you want if, as the other series as the series goes along um, you see a lot more, um, how would I say, the, 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 the cast, the cast of part two was great. Um, I asked the three, four, and so on and so forth, you know, I really like them as well, but Friday 13th part two, 
um, is not my favorite. I give it three stars um, because I did like the, the storyline. I did like the cast. Um, it's just the ending, not knowing what happened to Paul, and some of the counselors were never, their names were never said. Um, and they ended up disappearing throughout the film. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I would give uh, the third, the second film. Like I said, I've also done a two-part of part two on this channel um, review. You can check that out as well. On to Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. I would give this two and three and a half stars. Um, I like the beginning of the hockey mask. Um, Rick, the late Richard Brooker, who played Jason, was the second best Jason, in my opinion, um, and he went on to do a, a movie called Death Stalker, which a lot of people that uh, enjoy his film career and like uh, this movie probably already know that, um, but Friday 13 3 is, if it wasn't 3D when it was released, um, I never got to see the first first eight I never saw the first eight in the theater uh, but Friday 13 3 wasn't 3d and um, the 3d glasses if you watch it on the DVD or the blu-ray um, you can see certain things that uh, that the effects pop out of the screen and stuff like that but I'm sure it would probably have been a lot better like seeing it on the big screen and and not having to wear the, the red and blue glasses and actually be able to see put glasses like when my Bloody Valentine 3D came out uh, five years ago or six years ago. <clears throat> Actually, it's more like eight years ago. But, um, yeah, I mean, Friday the 13th 3, you've got, some, got Shelly in it, there's comedy parts in there, and you got the biker gang, and um, the, the barn in the, um, the cabin uh, was actually... Uh, a movie ranch that was actually used for the movie Twisted Nightmare that was made in 1985. Um, they used that same cabin in the barn. Um, so yeah, Friday the 13th 3, I'd give three, three and a half stars for that. That was a, it was not the, my favorite, but it was a good, it was a good uh, installment. It uh, brought into the, brought the hockey mask into being an iconic uh, uh, mask and as it is today. So next is Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which well, I'll know that's not the final chapter. They could have just called it Friday the 13th Part 4, but at that point in time, this was probably going to, this was going to be the last one. They wanted to do four movies and it'd be done. Well, it didn't happen, but Friday the 13th 4 does have a great cast. Um, you've got Lawrence Monison, you have Christopher Glover, you've got the, the Doublement twins, Carrie and Camilla Moore, you've got Corey Feldman, Kimberly Beck, Peter Barton, Eric Anderson, Joan Freeman, um, yeah, you've got that great cast, and then you also have Ted White, uh, a very well-known um, stuntman and uh, sometime actor. Um, he's still alive today, and he is my third favorite, uh, Jason. Ted White, um, his menacing performance in, in, in Friday the 13th Final Chapter was really good. Um, I've met the man in person, um, and uh, he seems he, he's very down to earth um, person guy. Um, yeah, Friday Thirteenth, the final chapter. I would give this. Um, I'll give this four stars. Four stars. Um, yeah, I agree with that. It's a great film. Um, it was a great ending to the series. If they had not gone on to any more, this would have been a great finale to the series. Um, I uh, like the felt that that Corey Feldman is like a makeup artist, kind of like because Tom Savini, who did the makeups for this, who did the makeup for the first one, shows up in here. So it's kind of like Tom Savini as a young kid, and, and in a way. Um, I'd also like the part that this is Tommy Jarvis, his first appearance. He ends up being part of the next two films. Um, Ted White's performance as Jason was really good. I mean, he definitely brings the uh, menacing part of that, and uh, he, he, like I said, he's the, my third favorite, uh, Jason. Um, so, yeah, final chapter was a great part of the series. So then you go on to Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, um, which, you know, if Friday the 13th, Final Chapter, the last one, 
it made a lot of money so paramount being you know like they want make they want they like that money they bring out another one just a year later um and bring back tommy jarvis even though feldman shows up in the beginning of the movie as tommy jarvis and as a, in a dream sequence it's now played by the actor john shepherd um the cast in here is definitely a mixture of uh mixture of actors, uh, Melanie Kinnaman, um, you have Julia Cummins, um, Miguel Inez Jr., Shaver Ross, Richard Young, the late Brennan Washington, Deborah Voorhees, uh, uh, Carol Locatel, Lil, Lil I, I, that's, that's how you say her name, Ron Sloan, um, Jerry Pavlon, uh, Tiffany Helm, John Robert Dixon, um, that's pretty much, uh, Gerard Fields, um, that pretty much says the cast, um, you have Dick Wien, um, playing Roy, um, in the film, and you have Tom Morga playing Jason, uh, playing Roy and the Jason Mass. now this is, a lot of people know this, this is not really Jason film, it does have Jason, uh, shows up at the beginning of the film, in a dream sequence, you see him every so often, and Tommy's hallucinations or whatever and that's about it um and you know that's Roy who's a paramedic ambulance driver uh, see his son get chopped up which is played by Dominic Fresca and the person who chops him up is played by the late Mark Venturini um so he goes takes revenge even though he all he had to do he already had the guy captured the guy who killed his son but I guess you know, he was already captured, so he wanted to take his vengeance on other people. Um, he, he takes it out pretty, well, pretty gruesome ways. Um, the director of this has, was was known to direct some porn films. Danny, Danny Steinemann. Um, he passed. He's he's no longer with us. He had he has passed away, but um, I think he did a great uh, directing job. Even though this has the most nudity and. Um, I think the most brutal kills, there is a lot of brutal kills later, but a lot of kills in this movie, that had to, a lot of that had to do with eyes. Um, that before he gets the shears chopping her eyes off, her boyfriend gets it strapped, wrapped around his eyes. Um, Vernon Washington gets his eyes, somehow I, his eyes are missing. Um, it had a lot to do with eyes in that movie. And, uh, yeah, but as far as rating, um... I'll give this two and a half. Now, I would give this like another star if it, it had um, included like the ending of Friday the 13th, the final chapter had Tommy Jarvis's eyes like get real wide you know, at the, when it's panned on screen. I wish they had done it like that. They had done, um, they showed Tommy, he goes a little crazy, so he starts going to kill him. But that would have fit more to the new beginning than what they did. Um, but John Shepard did a great performance in that. I'm not taking anything away from the acting in this. I know some of the acting, some of the actors in this have done stuff prior to this and done stuff after this, but, um, they did what they had with the script and everything like that. So that's, that's Friday the 13th Part 5. On to Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Um, this is my favorite of the series. I give this five stars. Now, I could give this a four and a half because there is a little bit of uh, uh, technical issues in the film, but for all intentions and purposes, this is my favorite Friday the 13th. It's Friday the 13th 6. It's got the uh, great soundtrack um, by Felony and uh, obviously Alice Cooper with Hard Rock Summer and Teenage Frankenstein. And he's back, the man behind the mask. So you've got some great music in that film. Um, Tom McLaughlin, who wrote and directed this film, did a really good uh, directorial movie that he did. He had done a movie called One Dark Night prior to this, um, and he's done tons of poems after this. Um, but he did. I liked his uh, directing and writing of this film. Um, you've got Tommy Jarvis back, and now it's played by Tom Matthews. Um, you've got a new Jason, which is now played by C.J. Graham. He is my fourth favorite Jason. Um, so yeah, you've got all these elements in here, and you've got comedian elements, and you also have a great cast, which you also include David Cadgen, uh, Vincent Gustafarino, uh, let's see, you have, 
Carrie Noonan, his uh, Tom McLaughlin's wife Nancy. You have the Tony Goldwyn. Um, let's see, Renee Jones, Jennifer Cook. Um, who else is in this movie? Uh, Tom Tom Fredley, um, Justin and Tommy Noel who played the two kids. So yeah, who so say the one kid is where it did meet. He goes, so what were you going to be when you grew up? It's just things like that that really bring, uh, that made me like the film the most. Um, I've seen probably 13, 6, Jason Lives. Probably the most out of the whole series. I've seen this, uh, the, this is the movie I've seen the most out of all the films. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so the, the really cool and interesting part of it is not only that you have counselors in it, but you actually see kids in it. Now, if my memory serves me right, I don't, I think this is the first time you actually, yeah, I believe this is the first time you actually see kids in the film. And I think it might have been the lone, the last time, too. Kids actual in the film um, at, at the camp that they're doing. Um, I do know that I think there was some kids in, like, uh, Freddy vs. Jason when you see the, the flashback sequence but as far as as far as actual kids in, in a Friday 13th um, at the camp and they're all getting taught by the counselors this was the first film um, and I like the part that they changed the name from Camp Crystal Lake to Camp Forest Green uh, that was really cool um, like Tommy says they can change the name to Camp Forest Green but to Jason is still Camp Crystal Lake um, the the part where the sheriff and his daughter and Tommy all have this little camaraderie where he hates him and she has a thing for him and stuff like that. And then they're driving around and they're playing that Hard Rock Summer by Alice Cooper and she said, get down on knees and, you know, and then he ends coming up out and the father has his shotgun pointed at him. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of things like that. I mean, Friday 13, 6, uh, I could, I, I'd, need, I'd like to do a, a full uh, review of that one day. But, uh, as we go on now, we have Friday the 13th, 7, The New Blood, which next year will be the 30th anniversary of, uh, um, this one I will give, uh, I'll give three and a half. Um, the thing, the most thing that I really like about this, and, and obviously, Kane Hodder is my favorite Jason performer, uh, this is introduction to Kane Hodder, um, John Carl Beekler directed this, he's a makeup artist. Um, the look of Jason, Jason having um, somewhat of a uh, competitor to uh, go up against, um, kind of like uh, Carrie, which is Tina, played by LaFarve Lincoln. Um, she has that, she has those powers where she can move things and stuff like that. Um, the cast in here was was well put together. Um, you have, have Kevin Blair, who's now known as Kevin Spartatus. Um, Yes, the Elizabeth Catton or Caton. Um, uh, who else was William Butler? Uh, he was in this movie. Uh, Stacy Greason, um, Diana Barrows, uh, Diana Almeida, Craig Thomas. Um, the, oh, I also forgot Susan Blue and Terry Kaiser. The thing that really a lot of people hated about the Friday the Part Seven was that. Terry Crew, Terry Kaiser went on to play in Weekend of Bernie's. He actually uh, was an asshole in that movie, which you know everybody doesn't like Dr. Cruz because Terry Kaiser plays an asshole in that movie. But yeah, he wasn't an asshole in Weekend of Bernie's because he was dead and, and he walked around with, as a dead body and they didn't make a sequel to that even. But uh, yeah, um, but he got he does get his. Um, comeuppance, as you would say, uh, so yeah, um, let's see, so that was Friday 13th, 7, The New Blood, so now we're going to do Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, now this came out in 1989, so, um, you've already, Friday the 13th has already done nine films, excuse me, eight films in the ten years of the 1980s, so now you're on a Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, and... It should have been Jason Takes a Cruise or Jason uh, Takes Vancouver, British Columbia. Because pretty much the movie was made in Canada. Um, a lot of the back behind the scenes was in Canada. 
Um, it took almost, what, 30, 45, 50 minutes before they even got to what's supposedly be Manhattan, because they're on a cruise ship. Um, I give this two, two stars. Now, a lot of people probably hate me because there's a lot of people out there that do like this film. And I'm going to tell you this. There is things I do like about this film. I don't like... I, the only thing I, the only thing that doesn't make it my favorite is because of the ending. That's number one. Number two is it takes too long to get to Manhattan. Number three, they never actually are in Manhattan more than, what, five minutes. I understand the probable production value and the cost of making the film and all that. But if you're going to make it called Jason Takes Manhattan, then that's what you should do. And that you should have it in Manhattan. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 8 is my least favorite film. If you want to go by all intents and purposes, this is my least favorite film in the series. Um, and Kane Hodder, his performance in this was, was what it was. Um, the makeup and was not the greatest. Um... The cast was not bad. Um, you had Jensen Daggett, Scott Reeves, Peter Mark Richmond, Barbara Bingham, Martin Cummins, uh, Gordon Curry, um, V.C. Dupree, Kelly Hugh, Charlene Martin, Saffron Henderson. Um, so, yeah, you have a great cast. It's just uh, the fact... Uh, it was pretty much on a cruise ship. Now, the kills were not bad. Um, the, uh, uh, the only thing that really got to me, that, about, that really thought was interesting, I would say, is when him and, and Kane Hodder, Jason, and Julius, V.C. Dupree, are standing on top of the mountain. A building, and he's sitting there punching and punching and punching, and he says, "Just take your best shot." And he ends up taking a shot and knocking his head right off, clean off his head. Um, um, another, another aspect that I kind I didn't really like, but I kind of understood a little bit, is that Rennie, played by uh, Jensen Daggett, keeps having memories when, as a kid, as seeing Jason younger. I mean, I guess it could happen, but Jason drowned in '57. Uh, the timeline doesn't fit too well. Um, and uh, and getting to the, the Manhattan scenes. The Manhattan scenes, they, I mean, he was right there in Times Square. I mean, it's really cool to actually see Jason in, in a big city. Um, and the part where he kicks the radio and these guys, uh, you did meet Slimeball, and then he ends up lifting up his mask and they run away. Um, that's really cool. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, and another part is when they when Jason is chasing after uh, the two leads going into the diner, and uh, who directed this movie, Rob H Hedden, his sister is the waitress there, and um, up comes up uh, the direct the, the the guy who played Ken Kersinger played Jason and Freddie vs Jason. Uh, this is way before that. He ends up. Coming in there and Jason tosses him like a ton of bricks. Um, but uh, in closing, um, the ending of the movie um, gets toxic waste put on him. He starts to melt and he turns back into a kid. I guess that was Paramount's way of saying um, we're done. The series has ended. The beginning of the movie, he drowned as a boy. He comes back out of the ground, out of the grabs Alice, and then at the end, at part eight, and then we're going to end the series where he goes back to the child. All right, done deal. So that's probably thirty part eight. So um, before I go into the other ones, if anybody have any comments or uh, leave or what's your favorites and what's your least or what you rank the Friday Thirteen films, leave them in the comments below. Um, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of dislikes on this video. I may get a lot of likes on this video, but hey, this is my opinion. This is what I like. This is um, this is it. So. Uh, so now we're going on to Jason Goes to Hell. So, and when it was released, it was called Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. But for some odd reason, on the DVD and the Blu-ray, it just says Jason Goes to Hell. Um, this is the first movie I've saw in the theater. Um, next year will be its 25th anniversary. Um, it came out August 13th of 1993. I give this three and a half stars. Um, it's... 
it was the first one I saw. When I first saw it, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. As the time goes by, I still like and enjoy it. Um, there's just certain things in there that I could have could have been taken out and maybe put something in back into it. Um, the beginning of the film where Jason is chasing this girl. This girl goes to this cabin and Jason is following her and chasing her. And then they end up falling in this place where a bunch of uh, SWAT team members and people with guns sitting there shooting blow up and blow up Jason. You know, I mean, I got all that part of the film. Um, so, yeah, that's not the biggest part of it. Uh, it's just certain things like, you know, having the guy sitting on a table and you're sitting there putting shaving cream on him and shaving his mustache. I don't really need to see all that. But uh, So after um, he gets blown up, he goes to the goes to the morgue and then the morgue attendant ends up, his pulsating heart comes back to life and is then biting, showing into his heart. You know, that, that part didn't really bother me much. And, you know, it's, might be gross to certain people and, and, and grossed out by that, but you know, it's no big deal to me. And then after, and 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 then and then before I go into more of the movie, um, has a great cast. I mean, you got Kane Hodder returning as Jason. You got, I mean, you have Stephen Williams playing Cretan Duke. Um, the act, uh, you have actresses from TV, Allison Smith from Kate and Alley and Aaron Gray from Buck Rogers. Yeah, even Kane Hunter playing himself in, in the movie, and uh, you got uh, Kara Keegan, who this was her first film. She plays the, the lead actress in the movie. You had Rust, Rusty Swimmer, who plays uh, the owner of the Joey B's Diner, and um, yeah, this just a great, great cast. The cast was not the problem. Um, Neither was the directing uh, Adam Marcus. Um, yeah, this was his first movie. I mean, I liked it. Um, I thought he did a great directorial debut film. I mean, he didn't have his brother Kit Marcus play in it. Um, but before I get into the other, the biggest thing about this one was John LeMay, who played on the Friday the 13th of the series, the first two seasons. Um, it was it was great to see him come from the series into the movie. Um and I like that aspect. That's what uh, thought was really cool. Um, there's not a lot of um, counselors in this film. I think, I think um, the uh, one scene in the cat in the, in the tent, uh, the two getting killed, was a really gruesome kill. Um, that's pretty much as far as we go, as far as going to a camp or anything. Um, so, but if, and if you ever see, if anybody has the DVD or the VHS and watches the unrated version of it, it's really got some great um, things. I wish that the, um, they put the unrated on Blu-ray, but, you know, maybe they will in the future. Um, but before, um, after they go, in, Jason goes to Morgue, and every so often, the Morgue bites into the heart and he ends up somehow turning into Jason because as he walks by a mirror, you see Jason. Um, so it's kind of like um, the movie Hidden was where the character, uh, the movie Hidden that New Line Cinema also made um, in 1987 is where a alien or some sort comes out of a person's mouth and enters another one's kind of like possessed. Um, the New Line Cinema and the, some of the directing, the director and the producers and the writers didn't really actually see that movie or didn't want to see it or had not realized it, what the storyline was. So a lot of people get upset because it's kind of like ripping off their film. Um, I do know that the film has got a lot of action in it, um, uh, and you know that pretty that was cool. To actually, it was definitely a change of pace for the film series. I know that in the first movie, Jason's mother said, "My only son, my only child, Jason." Well, you ended up finding out that he had a sister, and she had a daughter, and his her daughter had a son. So you know, I mean. The, I like the aspect of the film. Um, the creator of the first, Sean S. Cunningham, returns you to bring you the last. And born, and how was it go? Born through Voorhees, only a Voorhees can he be reborn, and only through a Voorhees can he be truly dead. Uh, I, li I really like that aspect of it. Um, I do know that the fight scene between him and John LeMay... Uh, it's really cool, um, especially it throws him up on this like this like jungle gym like kind of thing and tossing him over. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
there's a lot of hate on this film um, still today. Um, I don't hate this movie. Um, it's not my favorite, but I definitely enjoyed watching it. It's a great, it's a great fun to sit down and watch for an hour and a half and and see uh, the carnage. Um, now, throughout the film, there's just different going, different bodies and stuff like that. But when he does go back into a Voorhees, um, he tur he goes back to his original Jason skin, and that's really cool to see him come popping up out of the ground and seeing Jason and. Yeah, so at the end of the film, it goes all the two female, the male and female lead walk off in the sun with their child. And it leaves where Freddy Krueger's glove comes up on the ground and grabs Jason's mask. Now, we figured, you know, a lot about this is 1993. People are going to say, well, I guess we're going to see another, we're going to see finally see Freddy vs. Jason. Well, it didn't happen for another 10 years. Um, but, uh, so, you know, I like that part. That was really cool at the end, too. Um, so now we're going to Jason 10, or Jason X, as which everybody calls it, calls it Jason X. The, the number X is actually the Roman numeral for 10, so I'm going to refer to this as Jason 10. Um, before I go into Jason 10, I'm going to say that um, New Line Cinema acquired the rights as... Most people know after Friday 30 Part 8, they ended up getting Jason Goes Hell, and they did a Jason 10, and then they did Freddy vs. Jason. Um, and then they co, co helped with the remake. So, Jason 10, um, I saw in the theater when it came out in 2002, and um, it was actually made in 2000, so it took two years to actually get released. I don't know what, what will the main I don't know what the main reason was behind that I do I do hear I've read that they were going through a time period where uh, they were shooting digitally and from video to digital and pretty much uh, Jason 10 is pretty much all digital um, and some of the effects that a lot of people dislike the film is the effects not only the storyline of having Jason in space um, but I really in Enjoy this film. I give this four stars. Now I know a lot of people might hate me for this, but Jason 10 is my is in the top five. Um, I I like the fact that they tried to do all kinds of things to him to try to kill him. Um, you have a little cameo appearance by David Cronenberg. Um, the lead actress Rowan Lexa Dog is is a, is a beautiful knockout woman, and you have the Earth 2, and he gets cryogenically frozen, another group comes down there, brings him to space, and they fight him, and he kills these people in, in this, in the uh, space shuttle that they are in, and he ends up getting killed again um, by a robot, and somehow the nanobites bring him back, and he's now Uber Jason. Um, the mask is really cool. Um, it reminded me of the trailer for Jason Goes to Hell when he had the silver mask. Um, uh, so yeah, I I'm going to one day I will do a, a full in-depth uh, review of Jason Ten. Um, so yeah, all in all, I give this four stars, and um, it's sad to know that this is probably going to be the last of the original uh, series. Um, this is be the tenth film of the series. Um, for, from here on out, it's going to be either uh, there's Freddy, there was Freddy vs. Jason, and then there was Friday the 13th, the remake, or reboot, or reimagining, however you want to say it, and then whatever they do after that is probably going to be another remake, or whatever, but it's not going to conclude the top, the first ten films, um, so yeah, and all in all, I guess this was a definitely great ending to the series, in my opinion, um, so now we're on to Freddy vs. Jason, which, at the end of Jason Goes to Hell, which was in 1993, Freddy comes out of the, grabs Jason's mask out of the ground and pulls him into the ground, so, you, you know, you got that, um, ten years later, and, it was well worth the wait, in my opinion. I give this four stars as well. Um, 
uh, Freddy vs. Jason, um, the only thing that really irked a lot of fans and myself is that Kane was not playing Jason. Um, Ken Kurzinger did what he could do. I mean, it was it's it's not Kane Hodder. Um, but to have Freddy Krueger played by Robert England was really the, the selling point of getting this film, watching this film in the theater. Um, it went on make close to 90 million dollars just in the United States so if they ever did if they ever do or ever plan on it or whatever either make a sequel to this or not have another character from another series face Jason or Freddy or whatever and have a big monster like modern monster rumble and have all the characters iconic characters fight I would love to see that actually get made I know I've seen fan films on YouTube and stuff like that but I would love to see something like that get made Anyway, Freddy vs. Jason is a great action um, horror. It's got all the horror elements. Uh, I like the one beginning fact where Freddy's sitting there talking and he and showing scenes from the other films, and um, he needed somebody to bring him back, so he brings back Jason. Um, and, and you find uh, these kids um, having problems because they're taking these, these drugs, uh, Freddy, to keep suppress their dreams um it's got a great cast monica kina jason ritter uh can't remember all their names but uh, kelly Rowland from um the uh group uh that, that 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 group i can't remember the name that beyonce was in um somebody leaving comments below i can't the name of the group has, has passed me by but kelly Rowland went on to their own uh singles singing career um I like all the cacks in this movie, um, and the kills in it, and I like how Jason ends up killing Catherine Isabel, and Freddy says, that was mine, it was mine. Um, finally, the part where they, gets, they finally fight, um, one of the characters gives uh, Jason like a shots to make him fall asleep, and he, now Jason's in Freddy's, Freddy's in Jason's nightmares. Um, now, the biggest, the biggest thing that really got to me is when Jason is in, when Freddy is in Jason's dream, that Jason is fitting or fighting Freddy in their dream, and all of a sudden, he hits a sprinkler and his water comes down, and Jason decides not to, not to kill Freddy. Um, Jason has been drowned, has drowned in all the, he, he, he drowned as a kid, he was drowned in part six, he come out of the ground, he come out of the water in seven, and ended up back in the water in seven, and eight, he ends up coming back out of the water. He swims through all the play, through all, through all the way to Manhattan, and you know, so obviously he, Jason, Jason is not scared of water. Um, I think they were going for the fact that Jason's subconscious, which is him as a child, um, he was a, who could not swim as a child. Um, it's subconscious. It's not Jason and and you know his his body, but as a subconscious. And because you see him turn back into a little boy, he sticks his hand through and actually goes back and sees him drown as a kid. That's just my take on it. Um, I didn't like that part, but I like the action. I like the fighting. I like the cast. I like the way it ended. Um, would I like to see a sequel? Um, yes, I would. I'm sure it would make just as much or close or more than this film. Um, will it ever happen? Who knows? Um, so, yeah, that's Freddy vs. Jason. Now on to the final. Um, Friday the 13th. We have Friday the 13th the remake, which came out in 2009, which was made nine years ago and released eight years ago. So, Friday the 13th the remake... I give four stars as well. I like the, the way that Derek Mears played Jason. I like the cast. You have Jared Palladaki from Supernatural, Amanda Borghetti, Travis Van Winkle, um, Ben Feldman, Willa Ford, um, Aaron Wu, Julian Goley. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the cast. I like the story. Um, it, I like the director, Marcus Nispel, who uh, did the remake to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A lot of people shit on this movie, too. Um, it seems like the last three films people didn't like. Uh, 
they didn't like Jason Goes to Hell, or they, there's a lot of hate for Jason Goes to Hell, there's a lot of hate for Jason 10, there's a lot of hate for Freddy vs. Jason, and now there's a lot of hate for the Friday the Reunion. Well, you know what? That's fine. You know, everybody can have their own opinion whether they dislike or like in, about the films, but as far as I'm concerned, as a true Jason um, and Friday the 13th fan, the last three movies, last four, remake, Freddy vs. Jason, Jason 10, and Jason Goes Hell, in my opinion, were not that bad films. Um, but, yeah, the Friday 30 remake is pretty much getting all the first four films that were made all into one film. Yes, the first Friday 13th was about Jason's mother. They showed that in flashbacks during the credits a little bit where the canister was running through the woods and ended up chopping Jason's head off. Jason's mother's head off. That's fine. Um, the way they did it. I mean, to, to, for to today's society to see a not Jason in a Friday 13th film remake or whatever and to just have his mother probably would not made a lot of money. Um, this did make a lot of money. Not as much as Freddy vs. Jason did make a lot of money, though. Um, so I'm glad. It's kind of smart the way they did it. Um, and the uh, action in this movie, um, the storyline, the, the blood, the violence. I mean, they got tons, tons of stuff in this movie. A lot of nudity in this movie. Um, it's equal right up there with Friday the 13th, Fire 5. Um, but, uh,. All in all, I mean, I really enjoyed this movie. I am going to do a review on that sometime in the next couple months. I'm, I'm trying to get uh, into other horror films, but uh, eventually I'm going to get around to reviewing 3 through the remake. Um, now that this video is going on almost for 45 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and let, um, get close this out with, I would love to see another Friday 13th film. I hope it happens. With all the litigations with between Victor Brooke Miller and Sean S. Cunningham and Paramount and all the production companies through that, I hopefully everything gets resolved. But I would love to see another Friday Thirteenth, um, whether it be a remake or or it be a sequel to the remake, or uh, even just uh, a, a standalone film. Um, I would love to see that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a long one, um, but this is my ranking of. The Friday the 13th film. Um, thank you for watching and give this a thumbs up if you like this. Leave the comments down below and leave, leave me your favorite of the series.